Good morning and welcome to our worship on this third Sunday in Advent. So a little bit more than 800 years ago was the life of St. Francis. And Francis was quite concerned about what people had come to believe at this point. They believed in a sky god who was far away from us, who sat in judgment. And we didn't really have an easy way to be in touch with that god. And Francis was like, no, 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 God is here. God is here. And, and, and to bring that message home, St. Francis was the first person who created a quote-unquote crash or manger scene, which has got a, a, a rough shed and a, a statue of Mary and a statue of Joseph and maybe a camel and a goat and a cow and a sheep and, a, and, and, and this little um, uh, manger with hay in it, which is where animals feed. And then in that, in that place where the animals feed, he put a, 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 a statue of the baby Jesus. And, and maybe he added some shepherds coming to worship and, and kings coming to adore, etc. But all of that was about teaching us God is here. God's not some sky god up there judging us. God's here with us. God is here living with us. See, God is in humanity. Well, now, 800 years later, uh, those beautiful scenes uh, actually are in some ways have become a detriment. I love my mangers, but I want to approach them in a new way. The manger is in no way a literal historical concretation of what I would have seen back there if I had been living 2,000 years ago. The manger is a visible expression of the fact that when we find our lives in the deepest dark, just as when nature on this planet is in the deepest dark, that's where God's greatest grace comes to our life. That's where the turnaround comes. That's where new hope and new certainty and new trust erupts. And those names, uh, hope, love, compassion, reconciliation, justice, the freshness of that again in us, that's like the birth of the baby Jesus. And so when I see a manger and I see uh, some hay there and I see a small baby there, it's reminding me of the miracle of God that happens in my heart, especially when I'm in the dark times.
shines bright. Greeting from the one who was, who is, and who is to come, grace and peace be with you all. Our Advent wreath blessing. We gather together to allow our deeply held hopes to be reshaped by God's promises. We wait for and work for the day when God will make for us a future that is no longer twisted by our fears. Please pray with me. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles. By their flame, fill us with the glow of hope. Amen. Let us pray together. Stir up the wills of your followers, God our sovereign, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, your Messiah, and your evangelists. Anoint us with your spirit to receive Christ, welcome his overturning power, and participate in his outpouring of mercy through Jesus Christ, our rescuer and ruler, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we invite the children to come forward and uh, pay particular attention for the children's time. I've got with me today one of my friends, Goat. Hey, Goat. Hey, good morning. Hi, everybody. Um, Goat today is special because... Um, we celebrate somebody very special today. Oh, who's that? We celebrate someone whose name is Lucy. Oh, Lucy. I love Lucy. You mean Hope's sister, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. I hope. Well, you're, you're right. Lucy is, um, Hope's sister is wonderful. And uh, I agree with you, but, but that's not, not the Lucy I was talking about. Oh, you mean Jim and Renee's dog, Lucy. Who's a good dog? Who's a good dog? Lucy's a good dog. Lucy's a good dog. You're, you're right, Lucy is a good dog. Jim and Renee's dog, I agree, but, but that's also not the, the Lucy I'm talking about. Oh, um, I'm running out of Lucy's that I know. The only other one is the goose. The goose? Yeah. Lucy Goosey. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Um, but the, the Lucy that, that um, we're talking about, she lived a long time ago in a city called Syracuse. Oh, in New York? Uh, no, no, there is a Syracuse in New York, but this is um, a, a city in Italy, a long way away and a long time ago. Oh, okay. And this Lucy was very well known because she loved Jesus and she knew Jesus loved her and she wanted to follow Jesus and to, to live the way that Jesus wanted her to live. Oh, that's a good idea. We should all do that. Yeah, I agree. And the way that she did that was she took the, um, the money that she had and she said, oh, look, they're all around me. There are people who don't have enough food to eat or, or don't have a safe place to live. That is terrible. Exactly. So she took what she had and she shared it with them. She would um, Take food to people who are hungry. Oh, that's really nice of her. It is. It is. And it's a way of, of following Jesus, of being like Jesus, of being generous. Generous? What is this generous? Generous means sharing. Oh, sharing. That's good. Um, and so the, the stories that people would tell about her, sometimes she would go out when it was really dark um, at, at night to bring food to people, and her hands would be filled with food, but it would be dark. So before she would go, she would take um, candles and make sort of a crown of candles on top of her head and light the candles so that she could see where she was going even while she was carrying armloads of food. Oh, so she wasn't just generous, sharing. She was also smart. Exactly, exactly. And that's something that we can do too. We can. We can walk around with candles on our heads. Are you telling the children to walk around with candles on their heads? Well, not, not necessarily the candles on your head part. Okay, because you could get in trouble with their parents. I, I agree, I agree. Maybe you can skip the candles on your head, but what, what they can do is together with their families and other people, 
They can be generous, generous, sharing. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Exactly. Um, help people who don't have enough food to, to have something to eat or to help people who don't have a safe place to stay to, to help them to find a safe place to stay, especially when it's dark and cold. And we can be a light for people like Jesus is the light of the world. Oh, yeah, we can be a light like Jesus is a light. And we can be generous, sharing like Jesus is sharing. Exactly. And that's a way for us to, to prepare our hearts and, and to prepare the world for, for Christmas. Christmas. Getting ready for Christmas isn't just about wrapping gifts and singing songs. It's about being generous, sharing. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Christmas. Yeah. Do you know what my favorite Christmas song is? Um, no. What is your favorite Christmas song? Goat, tell it on the mountain. <laughs> that, that's terrific. Why don't you go practice singing? Okay. Bye-bye. Our scripture reading for today, hopefully you, you noticed um, at the beginning credits, if you will, the different readings for today. Um, but the one that I, I want to read aloud for us this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. It was an important scripture for Jesus. The prophet speaks. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A brief history quiz for you this morning as we begin our hearing the word. On August 1, 1952, a young black woman was inspired to give up her seat on a bus to a white man and move to the back of the bus. And for that, she was arrested. What was the name of that young black woman? Now, if you answered Rosa Parks, go ahead and raise your hand because you're mistaken. It wasn't Rosa Parks. It was Sarah Keyes Evans. Rosa Parks's protest was not until three years later. 
So now that you know that, on March 2nd, 1955, a young black woman, woman was inspired to give up her seat on a bus to a white man and move to the back of the bus and she was arrested. And of course, her name was Rosa Parks. No, her name was Claudette Colvin. Rosa Parks's protest was yet a few months later on December 1st of 1955. It was planned and supported by a whole group, a whole community of civil rights leaders and organizers. It became the Montgomery Bus Boycott. All three of these women, Sarah Keyes Evans and Claudette Colvin and Rosa Parks were inspired, which literally means inspirited, to have the Holy Spirit within you or upon you or all around you, inspired. The Holy Spirit came upon them and guided them and empowered them and their community around them. And it didn't change everything, even though they were inspired, even though they stood up and they were brave and they were courageous and they spoke up and took action on behalf of righteousness and justice. Nevertheless, there was great uh, resistance to their actions and their words and, and therefore resistance to the Holy Spirit. We remain today, even many decades later, still faced with so many injustices and unfairness and inequity for our sisters and brothers who are Black or Latino or Indigenous or LGBTQ or uh, disabled. So many of our sisters and brothers still face injustices, even though the Holy Spirit has inspired, been poured out upon and encouraged and enabled and empowered people. But just because everything hasn't been fixed, just because everything isn't the way that God desires it or, or we yearn for it to be, does not mean that the Holy Spirit is not present and is not active. The present Holy Spirit is present and active, is making a difference. We wouldn't have this hope, this sign, this experience of God at work, present in the world, changing things, transforming the world, except for the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's just a reminder to us that there are also forces continuing to resist that. And that is the word of hope that we hear from, from all of the, the scripture readings that we get today. We certainly hear it from Isaiah and from the other prophets. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us because the Lord God has anointed us, has set us apart, has called us, has given us a job, has given us a vocation, has given us a purpose in the world to look around and say, things are not the way that God would have them to be, but I and we together can do something about that. And not by our own power alone, but by trusting in the presence and the power of God's spirit upon us and within us and all around us, each of us and all of us together as a community of followers of God. We are inspired. We are inspirited. The spirit is upon us to do and say particular things, to say this is not how God would have it be. We look around at the injustices and we say, this is not the will of God. And then we say, God, how would you have us change it? How would you have us be different in the world from the way the world is? With no promise that just because we, we follow that, that everything will suddenly and instantly be transformed, but something will be transformed. Something will come into the world through us because we open ourselves to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And from the Gospels, we hear about John the Baptist or, or in the Gospel of John, as he's more presented, John the witness, who says, look, one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. And he is the one who will baptize you, not just with water, but with the Holy Spirit. He will, he will pour out the Holy Spirit upon you. The Holy Spirit who came out upon Elizabeth, the mother of John, who was herself a prophet and the mother of a prophet. The Holy Spirit that came out upon Mary of Nazareth, who was herself a prophet and mother of the Messiah. And Jesus himself, 
who goes into the wilderness and the Holy Spirit comes upon him and guides him into that. And, and Jesus, who in his, his first sermon that we hear about in his hometown, actually reads aloud the same scripture that I just read for you about the, the Spirit coming upon the people and anointing them and giving them the purpose to change the world, to do things that announce the presence and the power of God's grace and compassion and justice in the world. And then he says to the people today, this is true in your hearing and in your presence. And it is not just for you alone. It is for those people that you don't like, those people that you might think of as, as your enemies. Jesus says, this prophecy of Isaiah, it is active today. And in response to this moving and powerful sermon in his own hometown, his hometown synagogue, his hometown people decide, we can't have this, and they, and they decide to, to kill him in that moment. He barely gets through his very first sermon, and they're going to throw him off a cliff. Fortunately, he, he walks away through them unscathed, but an awareness that the, the, the Spirit is always present, is always active to change the world in which we live, and there is always resistance to it. Paul, as well, in today's second reading, he writes to the church in Thessalonica in Greece, and one of the things he says to them is, the Spirit is upon you, and do not quench that Spirit. Don't extinguish it like a, like a candle flame, but allow it to burn within you and around you and upon you. Allow it to change you, transform you, so that you can change and transform the world. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us today in a world that is still just as in need of light and hope and transformation and change. And this, the Spirit says, I am here, I am with you, I am within you and around you and upon you. And if you allow me through you, I will begin anew to make a difference in the world. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you and me. The Lord has anointed you and me to be transformed in order to be forces of transformation, to follow the one who was the Messiah, who, who not only proclaimed the presence of the Spirit, who not only poured out the Spirit, who not only baptized us with the Spirit, but who taught and who fed and who healed and who died and who rose in order to change the course of the world and the future of the world and the presence of the world. That is the one who continues to be active. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you and me. We are anointed by the Lord God. You and I have been called and empowered to live inspired. Amen. Please pray with me. God of power and might, Tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Your spirit, Lord God, is upon us. You have anointed us. You have sent us to bring good news to the oppressed. God, we pray now aloud and in our hearts for those who are oppressed. Stir up your power, O God. Stir up your power and come. Please pray with me. You have sent us to bind up the brokenhearted. God, we pray now in our hearts and aloud for those who are brokenhearted. Stir up your power, O God. Stir up your power and come. You have sent us to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. God, we pray aloud and in our hearts for those who are captives or prisoners. Stir up your power, O oh God. Stir up your power and come. You have sent us to proclaim the year of your favor, to comfort all who mourn. God, we pray aloud and in our hearts for all who mourn. Stir up your power, O God. Stir up your power and come. You have sent us to build up the ancient ruins, to raise up the former devastations, 
to repair the ruined cities. God, we pray aloud and in our heart for the building up of ancient ruins, devastations, and ruined cities. Stir up your power, O God, stir up your power and come. As the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so you, Lord God, will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. God, we pray aloud and in our hearts for righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Stir up your power, O God, stir up your power and come. We give thanks for St. Lucy of Syracuse and others whose lives have exemplified the power of your grace. Stir up your power, O God, stir up your power and come. Draw near to us, God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your beloved, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The ever present spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Go in peace. The spirit of the Lord God is upon you. Serve the Lord. By the presence and power of God, we will. <laughs>